Hello and welcome to Do My Trains. And for today, I want to share with you guys how I made this structure to the state that it is right now. It's not finished yet, so a lot that needs to happen, a lot of detailing. But as of now, it's the, the base is there. It's painted, the windows are in, the window dressing is in. There's a roof, custom made. It's a, it's a massive structure for my layout, relatively speaking. It's the biggest building that I want to have on the layout. So yeah, there's a lot to see and a lot when I can explain how I did this, a lot of different techniques that uh, that came with it. And after that, I just want to do a quick round on the layout, see what other updates are there. So let's get started with this building. So this build, this is a structure. Let me just lift it up so you can have a closer look. Um, from ABR Model Works in Australia. And it's basically built out of these separate panels. We've been working together to uh, build or design this product because no one in the entire industry has made a five, one, two, three, four, five, and he also has a six story high single panel with bricks. Um, so, yeah, that's the, what this is. It's built up out of all these panels. As you see, it's curved as well. Like, oh, let me see, take this angle. You'll see it's a, a tightening curve. And we have a little peek through there. And if you look on the back of that, it's nothing really special. Let me see, show you just one panel. I, I am going to make a roof uh, or ceiling, I should say, and a, a back right there. So if you take pictures from a very, very low angle like that, as we're going to be doing, then you won't be able to look through it. So starting it, you just very basically just glue everything together. Um, I had some extra panels without windows and with some more windows. So you can still choose to configure it a little bit different as you wish. So as you see, I have a uh, two window section here for this end. And then we go three window to really create a big wall of windows. There's a load of detailing that's going to go in here. Just mention a few things. We have a load of dust collectors that are going to go here. That's why there's no window. There's going to be an awning that's going to go all the way up to, I believe, this um, dock right here. Then we have, because I told Chris, I wanted to open these doors on these docks. I want to be able to look inside. So he came up with this. And this is a bit of a kit bash of one of his standard products. So that's just going to sit just like that. So that's there. There is, well, this structure. Um, it's going to go like that on top of the roof. Already selected the paint color. It's going to be a flat red. It's different than that one and that one and that one. Just slightly. Just want to have some variation between the different buildings just to accent it. So now you think that's that's done. We'll just paint it. Blah blah blah. But uh, of course, unfortunately not, um, because when you spray paint, you're not going to mask any faults with spray paint. The paint, the primer, is actually going to accentuate any faults that, that are there. So just to give you an example of not a fault, but something that will be accentuated is that um, here, these bricks of this panel actually continue underneath the pilaster. So there actually is of the, the mortar line of the brick, a little crevice that is right there that runs underneath the pilaster. So you're thinking like, holy cow, okay, yes. So what are we going to do about that? Well, we got to fill it. And ABR Model Works, as a uh, yeah good friend and sponsor of the channel as they are, they he foresaw that. So he gave me these syringes with different shape of needles at the end, different sizes, sorry. And I ended up using the smallest one. I filled it with matte medium. And then you just plop a line of matte medium all the way there and any other yeah seam that you might have just to fill it a little bit. So that's all done. So now surely we're ready for paint, right? No, not really. That's where this test piece comes in. You can already see it. I roughened up the bricks. Oh, I basically I tested to just with a knife. I think I did it like that. It doesn't really matter. And just with that knife, just cut cut some bricks off like that. And, um, and then we're going to go to paint. <laughs> so I want to show that in this video as well. So here a quick update in hopefully one minute of several hours of work. As you see, I roughened up the bricks quite a lot. You can really see it 
nicely now with the, uh, the coloration. This is the last step before paint. And also with sandpaper, just went over all the edges just to make it a little bit less uh, fresh. Still needs a good dusting though before I paint it. And then with an X-Acto knife, yeah, I just took out loads of bricks. I first just marked it with a pencil just to make a little bit of a nice uh, random effect. And then uh, yeah, just plucked them all out. That was quite some hours of tedious plucking. And now, um, yeah, let me start painting. And through the magic of editing, we just plopped five or six hours of painting worth in a few seconds. And if you wanna know exactly how I painted this and with which colors, this video right up there that shows you um, how I painted this building. And I think there's another video shows you how I painted that building using more or less the same techniques. I also have a video on how I painted that building. And so I'm not gonna go over how I did it exactly. I did change it up a little bit. Now there's an image you see, I don't have the credits for it yet, so you see it on your screen right now. This was the inspiration for the paint job here. So back to that picture with the credits. Um, that's what I'm trying to mimic. And kudos to him, because he really made me uh, redefine my brush or my sponge technique to make this all happen and I'm really happy with it like I said it's not done yet let me just finish this stuff paint those bricks go more weathering let's see how far we get in this video let's go yeah look at that of course you guys were all looking at this nice trim up here and also we have the foundation down there and it took a lot of work. This took a lot of work to prep because all these angles and that took a lot of work to install. So all together, also all together, it's a bit uh, yeah, surprised how much work that was, but that's all good and fun. And then onto the wash finally, and it's just a wash with black. And I want to do the entire building all in one go. And it's because it's so big, I ended up using just a massive brush just to get it all uh, wet with the initial wash. And after it was wet, I added with full strength black and in other places, just a water to, to add more accents, some more black accents where the bricks have deteriorated at the bottom of the building. And some places I cleaned it up with some water just to keep it a bit fresh. And then this is the end result. And the top structure came out uh, actually quite nice. I think it's quite nice. It's not really what I was expecting. Maybe it's still a bit patchy, but I like it. Um, and it fits nicely, has a nice contrast with the rest of the brickwork. Otherwise, if this would be the same, I don't think uh, it would be you know that nice if I have it like this. So that's that. And of course, there's a lot behind the scenes I can show you guys right here because the biggest challenge or the, or the difficulty factor of this building is determined by its shape so you see it's curved it has this nook here or whatever you call it and it's also quite deep still it's still quite deep despite these are all relief buildings uh, not full depth it's still quite deep and if you look on the back side that means you need to if i can get that all on here let me just move the camera way, way back because it's such a big building. So that means if I just move around, around a little bit, see a little bit what we're looking at. I had to build this whole substructure. Um, I, reinforced, I reinforced the front wall with this bracing right here, the horizontal ones. And then I needed some kind of support for the roof. I, I glued these braces in all along the edge but you need something in the middle as well because it's so deep. So then I glued these um, vertical risers to support also these horizontal ones and then these ones that are just coming out. So all this does is support the roof. So then I can just put it back. So there's a lot still that needs to happen. Uh, just to talk about the detailing a little bit, there's a, a load of duct work. So now onto the rest of the layout and what we can expect. Um, I've slowly been collecting these trucks, just buy them when I have a good deal, uh, especially the, the, the two axle ones. Um, and what are we going to do? Obviously finish the other building, but concurrent to that, I'm going to start detailing this. And before I want to uh, detail, I can detail and stick in some signs, for example, from skill signs, the ones you guys saw in another video. I want to ballast all of this. So, and we can ballast, I'm going to ballast from street to street, so I can ballast from here 
all the way down to there. And if I'm having too much fun, I might just do this section as well and just somehow stop a bit here. And for that, we need ballast. And for the bulk of the uh, work, I'm gonna take this black ballast. I just like black ballast. Uh, but I do want to mix it a bit and see where that heads. So I bought also some black cinder. I forgot the company. It's not listed on here. But I'll put it in uh, down below in the text right now. And I got some basalt. And this is way lighter. A bit grayish. And I might mix it. But I'm also planning to use this for the yard. Um, because I really need, for operations, I need to differentiate the main line or the arrival departure track with the yard tracks. Because there's just so many tracks right now and people are just getting confused, including myself. It was getting so confusing that I actually wrote them on here as well. Caboose, six, five, four, three. And the same on all this side, as much as I didn't want to number the tracks, I just needed to. Three, two, one, zero. I just had to, because I explain a lot um, during operations to the other folks. And you just need to be able to easily say, Go to track one, track three, track two, and then without pointing it out like I'm doing now, but just uh, say it and then they know where to go. So that's some stuff I did. We are ready for an operation session, so that's why this is looking so organized and so neat and clean. Just wait till after the session. I also, for anyone interested, updated the roster, and just in a nutshell, I split the, uh, the car float operations in two different sections because before um, the, the flow would arrive and it would have to be flipped in one go so everything off everything on but that was just too dominating and that was just it was the car float um, it was too much work for one crew it would take almost like an hour in real time to do and it's just too dominating because if someone slow is doing the job and it's delayed then the whole there's a knock-on effect on the entire roster so by chopping that one barge flip up into a barge arriving full and then leaving again empty to go on to another task and then later in the day arriving empty and to be loaded and then departing again full, that just gives so much more flexibility. And as an added bonus, there's now a lot of meets in this middle near north section. For everyone who hasn't uh, been following the operation so we have the east side is everything to the left of the track from this perspective and the west side everything from the right of the track from this perspective and those are two different crews who've done two different jobs or two different timings throughout the day and whilst uh, these jobs are switching we're going to have through traffic because the brewery is way back there and then the barge with the, to the pensy is right there and the yard again is over uh, this way here on the lift gate that's now open so I'm assuming a little bit that tea uh, generates a lot of dust out of the bags, all the leaves that are brittle, etc. So we're going to have some of that. Um, I got this. I actually have this in a kit, but I have too many projects. So I found this pre-built one. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have it as a bit of a fancy placeholder. Uh, it needs to be weathered. There's a lot of stuff because it looks terrible when it's like that. But it just, you know, I just need to have less projects yet get the layout uh you know moving forward so here's another example of that it's a stand in these i think i can just weather nicely save the day a little bit and then moving around the layout just to finish this update is now it's also blatantly obvious what's missing now that the back wall is slowly filling in and all these gaps here i need to find or reprint these backdrops maybe before we photoshop them a little, a little bit to get this filled in and also to get this one filled in somehow and then i got several of these kits for the what is it highway overpass i'm gonna say expressway and that one is going to go over here up here where this dark silver is and then this is the road on the ground level and i already figured out already this i really want this scene to be finished is that underneath here is going to be parking like a lot a bit of a grimy scene Maybe some stuff, some bins, some trash. Uh, yeah, that would look nice it's under this highway overpass. Uh, I need to fill in the back there. And so much more to do. Great fun. That's all going to be in a, a later video. So that's it for this update, guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps with the channel. And support us on Patreon if you feel like doing that. That's it for today. Thank you. Bye-bye.